It's that time again. <laughs> God. That really does become super played out during season one. I'm not gonna lie though. And at some point during during this final fight, funny enough, Halloween so just says, I'm blocking out the quads of brainwaves for you. What? You can do that? You should have done that a lot fucking sooner. Gee, apparently you can. Yeah, I can just do that. Um could probably use that when we were almost captured twice. What the fuck? Uh, maybe they got Maybe, maybe they're becoming self-aware of their own bullshit and just wrote that in, I don't know. <laughs> I have very few problems with Double O Season 1, but that's like, eh, could have probably done without the gratuitous amount of uh, fuckery for Alleluia, considering his rival character has a, is just constant headache for him. God damn it. It's a migraine. Literally migraine material, yeah. That should work. <laughs> also, if I know, I know you're you're busy with your phone, but if you watch uh, the Jinx's movement while I'm charging up a strong attack, you'll see that the AI is now very prone to just auto dodging a lot of my attacks. <laughs> it just such weird, really precise side to side movement in order to get, to get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, like that. That was fucking weird. Also, at this point, obviously, there's no difference between the there's not the, the difference like the Tiara or uh, the re regular Tiara that. Uh, Sergey was in. You know, so just kind of just destroyed a stronger one, and you're basically there. It is disappointing, but it's fucking whatever. Okay, let's see here. At least, uh, at least one good narrative thing is at this point in time, only the only true natural uh, original, I guess, in this in the manga's case, the original uh, solar reactors are capable of transam, uh, not the pseudo ones. The other ones apparently also have a finite amount of um, particles they can actually hold on to at any time at once as well. They need recharging. The solar reactors don't fucking care. They can just kind of, they can't keep going forever, but they have a hell of a charge on them. <laughs> so for example, that's actually one of the things that put the the thrones on a heavy time limit is the fact that they're they have the red solar reactors. So like whenever Nan needed to drop the giant fuck off. Uh, solar field in order to uh, block out all enemy communications or radar. Uh, yeah, it was very much like a battery. And once they were t the thrones were turned against by uh, cornhole and ribbons, or so ribbons. Oh, hey, it's that scene. Uh, they needed to. They were kind of on a lifeline at that point. <laughs> you don't get it, woman. <laughs> okay, so this is fucking great. We got no contact for us because subs. Your quantum brainwaves give you super reflexes, but obviously your mind is too sluggish to keep up with that kind of reaction speed. So this is the point where Hallelujah is becoming more, more cooperative with Hallelujah as a whole. So the whole thing about being a super soldier, according to him, is that reflexes and brain processing power have to be as one. So in other words, law, we just power corrupt the fuck out of Alter Instinct with that. Because <laughs> Alter Instinct is all about reflexes and moving before the brain can think. But apparently, uh, one thing you- Oh wait, no, it wasn't the end fight. Okay. <laughs> because we saw- We didn't- we noticed- Wait, Lock-On would've died. Why are we still going then? It's weird. Huh? No, I'm just thinking that literally the final fight that, uh, Alleluia has before he gets captured and thrown into the Saiyan Asylum was that big. So what the hell else could it possibly be after that? Weird, but eh, guess I can't complain too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, apparently Soma... I, I'm not sure if the whole split personality thing was by design now. Because according to Hallelujah, that what makes a super soldier is having the reaction time and having the brain functioning power to process all the information accurately with the, re with the reflexes. Soma apparently is only able to pro uh, react back uh, quickly but can't process the information, so just acting like acting on instinct. So I wonder if the fact that he uh, Alley has two personalities in his brain, I wonder if like at a given time one's reacting and one's processing. Probably. I, I can't help but think that might have been designed. The more I think about it, it's loose speculation. But I feel like that might have been what they were going for with setting up Alley to be the perfect super soldier. Yeah. While also being the most fucked up fundamentally. It's just it's just speculation on my part. I think his split might have actually happened naturally as a result of trauma. I don't think that was the drugs, actually. Probably not. 
it definitely feels more like it was it was either a byproduct or the, or the direct intention to do the whole spirit personality. Uh, then again, as, as we saw with um, even just Alia uh, going into the colony to blow up the Super Soldier uh, program, there was some fucked up shit going on inside. And we also can obviously ext extrapolate that from what uh, Marie was going through <laughs> during that shit as well. Oof, that's, that's a bit rough. Okay, what are we doing? Uh, I think this might just be a straight up survive mission because it was at this point where everyone was just bearing down right onto, right onto uh, the tall Myos. We're running the end, aren't we? Yeah, this is the final mission. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I will, you got fucked, so. Yeah. Not gonna be in a, in a state where I have to use uh, risk transam or anything, so that's good, but. I mean, you can, you may as well. Yeah, that's gonna require me to nearly lose though. That's a one problem. Oh. oh wait, I think I might have actually intentionally triggered Transam during sets in this story. That's been a while though. Give it a shot. The thing though is that it, it, only, it, only activates, no it only activates when you're at critical health. Yeah. Or you're only able to activate that. And even then, I'm not one but sensor with a command prompt is for it. It's it's some combination of pulling down L1, L2, R R1, or R2. How do I identify? <laughs> Ah, good. Another swarm. Awesome. Probably the bottom triggers. Probably. I actually didn't see how many I had to go blow up. Be... I'll do like 20. Oh, wait. I didn't. I wasn't allowed to select that partner for this level. <laughs> My defense is going to be a little more uh, on the weaker side. Actually, the funny thing is, I've noticed that if you don't have a partner selected, sometimes you can get a keys and assist with certain characters. Randomly. It's actually kind of hilarious. This is probably depend, uh, depend on, on who's actually there at the time. Probably. Also, I've been noticing that uh, the lasers that uh, usually various effects from enemies will actually happen dur during your QTEs if they are applicable. Like, you'll get the red lasers from the pseudo reactors, etc. Nice details like that. Alright, there we go. I think you win. Or Christina. And Lishti. Yeah. Or Cyborg dude that we gave Lou no character to. Oh, there, oh is, there is one detail about that that I actually really love. Mm -hmm. And that's that despite despite his attempt at a, at, at a flirty nature, the one time he gets to see everyone else in swimsuits and be in swimsuits himself, instead he of picking a Speedo or just... Uh, uh, regular swim shorts. He was put he, into uh, like a swimsuit for like the 1950s. Yeah. Yeah, he was put inside a 1920s full body swimsuit for men. Yeah, and refused to get in the water as well because the, the machine parts probably wouldn't re react too well to, to uh, even just regular water in general. But I love that. That's a weird detail. You're probably not going to think about it again, but no way it does actually come up. Yeah, you would think that he was just like self conscious or something compared to. The Giga Chad, other dude, forgot his name, fuck. Lasse. Lasse. Yeah, compared to Lasse. Who's a muscle bound beach god running around in a Speedo. Yeah. It's like, yeah, how am I supposed to remotely compete for Christina if, if I, I don't look like him? <laughs> Which would be understandable, uh, self conscious and everything, but like. Yeah, no, there was different elements at play for that one. Yeah, I can imagine he probably also wouldn't want to show that off to, every, uh, to everyone else there. Yeah. It also then begs the question: Why would you be uh, super flirty if there was if there was the remote chance that that could actually go anywhere? And eventually, you'd have to tell someone about what you are. Yeah, I mean, imagine enough enough of his body is not cyborg, he could get away with going for it. But yeah, that seems like something that you'd want to like work your way up towards, and not just be like, "Hi, my, my, hi, my name's Lucy. I'm a cyborg." I don't know, but again, we don't explore that enough to really have information one way or the other, so that's an unfortunate part. Almost there. Get over here. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I never actually thought about that. Holding the charge is approaching slowly, and then be like, boop, right, point blank. Is it cheap to kill off a character that, uh, that you never really had much investment for and try to make you cry over them all at once? Uh... My my gut reaction says yes, but logically speaking, probably not. 
Those kinds of deaths always screamed to me that we didn't have anything planned for this character and we had to quickly change our narrative direction in order to get you to feel sent for his character. Lofter comes to mind, IBO. Oh yeah, that reminds me. In, uh, in Christina's dying speech, she's like, uh, Felt, please learn about fashion and be happy, but most importantly learn about fashion. And then in season two, I don't think she, uh, I don't think she ever takes off the uh, her normal suit even once, or the or the jumpsuit. I think you're right. Yeah, she's always just in that straight uniform. That too, yeah. So it's like, well, you didn't honor your quote unquote best friend's dying wish. Good Felt, job. Felt's character is taking it in a lot of weird directions. I don't understand. Felt is a bad character. I'm just gonna say that straight up. Felt has felt okay, if not quiet, and not too interesting in season one. Season two, it's like, huh. So, is Setsuna just your plan B because Neil's dead and... I mean, granted, five years. Yeah, yeah, Lyle's a dick. Lyle's a, Lyle's a prick, yeah. <laughs> but, like, there is no there is no sub order for Setsuna in season one, and you don't have enough interaction to warrant Set? getting you to crush on him in season two. I mean, Grant, I, I'm... Her attempt to hump sets, you know, that doesn't actually come through until the movie in the season. I think the only time they have a line of dialogue is about a potted plant or something. Yeah. It, but it's like, are we just getting cold feet on setting up Moreno or something? I don't understand. Apparently. Yeah. She, she's too busy with kids, and Setsuno doesn't want none of that. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It's all... <laughs> so there's a fun thing that, uh, that wasn't talked about. It's at this point uh, with, with uh, Marie that Marie too, someone like that um, essentially, yeah, he needs to really go hard with Trans Am, and so as a result, there's a sort of meld of Alleluia and Hallelujah, visualized obviously by the hair being pulled back and both the eyes being exposed at once. They have different colored eyes. I don't think it's ever come up at all, does it? Does it? Like I only just realized that. Well, not I only. No, it happens. I didn't well, just realize it. I saw it sooner, but like. It's never, like, elaborated on. Like, it's just, like, a keen, uh, neat beat difference. Oh, yeah, one of them, uh, sec. Sergei allowed himself taking a shot, so that way, uh, Soma could deal a pretty good blow to, t uh, Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, that Ooh. reminds me. After this fight, Hallelujah and Soma never get a chance to talk again. Which is funny, because there's, like, a third of season two where uh, Marie goes back to being Soma. Yep. And Hallelujah, I guess, just doesn't come out during that time, so they never get to talk. It's like, that would have been really funny to have them just taunting each other like, I, e, uh, in a room on the ship. Yeah. And then it's like, everyone's like, what the hell is going on? That would have been great. And I, just, thought, I thought they were lovers. Yeah, I'd just like to mention that my mission results screen is starting to reflect uh, finishes a little bit. We've, done, <laughs> we've had ass, we had abs in one of the prior ones, and now we have backs. Great. The mission results screen is a man of fine taste. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, that that was Al. That was Alleluia's story. That was fun. Some highlights. Nothing too extravagant. Unfortunately, there's a lot more they could have done with it. But I I understand that he doesn't have a lot. Well. He does have a lot going on in season one, but it's so disconnected from what what frequently happens with the other characters that it's kind of a, it's kind of rough to translate into a proper game format. And then there's Tiaria, who doesn't really become a character until season two. Gonna be honest. No. Yeah. Well, as long as we're here, I can showcase the thing really fast. So Tiaria be like, haha, not like go burr. <laughs> essentially. So, as it turns out, uh, my downtime while I was practicing games, uh, practicing this game between uh, Setsuna and Lock-On stories, I had some free time and I was practicing and I ended up accidentally beating Score Attack. <laughs> Not with every character, but so far just with uh, Tiaria because uh, Machine Go Burr, <laughs> giant fuck off can, lets you destroy the game, it's great. <sighs> uh, final boss, it, level 100 is... Um, Finding the double O and uh, that machine that uh, Mr. Bushido is piloting at the same time. The Enact. The Enact, yeah. It's a little tricky, but it's not too horrible if you just sit there and zone. It's great. Okay, so. Gonna take a really fast break to get some refills. I'm coming next. 
Tiaria story. Oof. And then we, we get to... We get to maximum femboy hours. <laughs> <laughs> Mom clothing hours. And giant fuck-off bazooka hours. The original Astolfo. Not going to watch that capacity, but absolutely. <laughs> One that I can look back on after coming out with bisexual and be like, yeah. Listen, Tiara can literally be whatever you want him to be. He can, he can be, he can be your, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your VTuber, your angle, or your devil. I can't follow up to that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oops, Bob's solo show. Oopsie. 